Are you thinking about buying an M1 MacBook Air right this moment? I'd hold on to your cash. Welcome back to Marcos Reviews. Thank you as always for subscribing if you have. If you haven't subscribed, there's a button just, just down there somewhere. Now this, uh, it's not heavy, not sure why I made that noise. This is my favorite ever laptop. It's the M1 MacBook Air and it is just absolutely superb. However, if you're thinking about buying one of these right now, I'm actually going to say wait. Consider this a public service announcement if you are in the market for an M1 MacBook. And I've been waxing lyrical about this device over the last few months. Therefore, I understand if you're sitting there thinking, why is he now telling me not to buy one? There's a very good reason for it and it's because there might be something quite exciting waiting in the wings. So keeping up with Apple as a reviewer and as someone who offers buying guidance to you guys is relentlessly difficult. It's It can be very, very frustrating. The only people that know exactly what Apple are going to do, it's not Mark Gurman, it's not John Prosser, it's none of those people that leak or kind of look into the, into the supply chain and try and work out what's going on. It's Apple. It's the people at Apple who decide on the release cycles for their products. And this does make buying advice very tricky. I genuinely thought that the MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air, would be around for quite a while in its current guys and it might be potentially but some of the rumors are suggesting otherwise now I've offered some similar advice for the M1 MacBook Pro I'll leave a link to that video up here but why am I so worried now about the M1 MacBook Air so what are the rumors well Pretty straightforward, really. John Prosser, if you don't know who he is, he's a guy who shaved off his eyebrows recently, but he is someone who leaks Apple news and forthcoming Apple products. Quite often he gets it right, sometimes he doesn't. It's a real mixed bag, and it goes back to what I said earlier about the fact that no one knows what Apple are gonna do next apart from Apple. Basically, if we take his rumors on face value, we're either gonna get a completely redesigned MacBook Air or Apple are gonna resurrect the 12 inch MacBook Nothing, as it was known. Now obviously you all know hopefully what the MacBook Air is, but the MacBook Nothing, which it wasn't called the MacBook Nothing, it was just called the MacBook, it was this very odd, tiny little laptop they made a few years ago, which had one port, very, very thin keyboard, very, very thin design, and it was pretty useless. It was impressive what they did in terms of making this incredibly, you know, thinner than a MacBook Air laptop, but it was underpowered. That single port was just ridiculous. You know, as soon as you, ch you plugged it into charge, you couldn't attach anything else to it. It was just either ahead of its time or a really bad idea. So the idea of bringing that back bothers me a little bit. It means we could be going down the route of a very complex, product line when it comes to MacBooks, or these leaked images, well they're not leaked images actually, they are renders that have been made by John Prosser's mate. Maybe they are actually the next generation MacBook Air. And I think they look really nice. If these renders are based very accurately on something that is coming out of Apple, I'm quite excited. They come in multiple colors, so very similar to the recent iMac launch, they, and the iPad Air, they come in these kind of pastel colors, seven in total, we're told. It's got white keys, white bezels around the screen. I know that's an issue for some people, particularly pros, but I don't think in the consumer land of Apple MacBooks, that's a big deal at all, really. It's also a hark back to MacBooks of old. I really like it, and I think a lot of other people would. If this is what Apple are gonna do next with their MacBook, it will sell like hotcakes. So it would be a home run, I think, for Apple if they went down this route, but it creates a lot of issues for consumers. So. Let me try and explain what bothers me the most about this. So I think there's two issues and it depends completely on what this MacBook is. So let's assume it's a MacBook Air. That means this MacBook that I bought and lots of other people have bought has suddenly got an incredibly short shelf life. And it's the same thing for the MacBook Pro that I mentioned in my recent video. People who have bought this would be understandably annoyed if just two or three months later, this brand new version of the MacBook Air arrives with new colors and new design features and it's the new thing that everyone wants, and albeit you've got one that you bought a very short time ago, which is now out of date. And that's the main reason why at the moment I'm saying don't buy an M1 MacBook Air. The other problem is that MacBook nothing. If, it, if this is gonna be a rehash of that 12 inch MacBook, it confuses me completely. Many, many years ago, when Steve Jobs returned to Apple after a bit of a hiatus, he walked up to a whiteboard or a chalkboard or something on the wall, allegedly, and drew four squares. And within those squares, he placed the iMac, the Power Mac, the iBook, and the PowerBook, and he put them exactly where you expect to see them based on the type of user and the type of device. Ultra simple, four products, that's it. Now, if the MacBook Nothing comes back in this new guise and they keep 
the M1 MacBook Air, we've suddenly got this MacBook nothing, the new one, the MacBook Air, base level 13 inch MacBook Pro, for, I'm having to read this out, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, potentially if that arrives, and a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now at the Pro end, it's a little bit easier to differentiate which one is right for you. But as soon as you get down further to things like the lower end MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and the, allegedly this MacBook nothing, where do you go from there? What do you advise people buy? What do you buy yourself? Defining an audience for those products at the bottom end gets very tricky if that happens. More importantly, right now, it just means that if you're in the market for a MacBook and you're not bothered about the MacBook Pro, you have to be very careful about what you do next. WWDC at the time of filming is about a month away, a little under a month away. We don't know if Apple are gonna announce anything hardware wise at WWDC. We do think there's a quite a high chance of them doing something about the MacBook Pro, revealing some kind of big update to that, that particular MacBook. When it comes to the MacBook Air and, or if it is this MacBook nothing, we don't really know what the plan is in terms of the launch for it. John Prosser's leaks, they don't really talk about this being a thing at WWDC. It's just here are these new laptops. What do we do? What do we do with that information? Well, if you are in the market for a MacBook Air at the moment, just wait. I don't think that that particular device sits in a bracket where people have to buy it straight away. I think normally it's a purchase where you might be upgrading from a previous version. You may just want one, which is cool, or you might be switching from Windows to Mac. In all three of those instances, you probably can wait two or three more weeks just to see what Apple does at their next event. The other possibility is that they release this new MacBook via a press release. That's unlikely. That is basically when they just launch it on their website and you get an email about it. I don't think that would be the case. It looks like too much of a interesting product to do it that way. And it's always important to remember that it can take quite a while for these new Apple products to hit the shelves. So even if they do release it at WWDC or they just announce it at WWDC, that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get it straight away. You may have to wait until later this year to get your hands on one. And even then, it's a first generation product. It's a brand new design potentially. It could have lots of little issues that no one knows about until they start using them. And it will take Apple, as it often does, a little while to iron out those issues. Unless you like buying things when they, as soon as they come out, I would hold off anyway, because that first iteration of a brand new product, particularly when it's a new design, I'd leave it and allow other people to experience the bad things with it. Let me kind of get frustrated with it and tell you those frustrations and let Apple iterate it and make it better. But the reason I'm saying hold fire at the moment is because if you, let's just say you bought a, an M1 MacBook Air right now, and then at WWDC, Apple launches this brand new version of the M1 MacBook Air or a MacBook nothing which you love the look of, you're gonna have some serious buyer's remorse and that isn't nice. This new version might also have things that you don't like. So you may not like the white bezels or the port decision that Apple makes with it in terms of what you can plug into it, that may not work for you either. It might be too slow, it might not have enough RAM options. It just means by waiting until WWDC, at least, you can make an informed buying decision. If they don't mention this thing at all at WWDC, and like I say, you're not bothered about the M1 MacBook Pro or whatever comes next for the MacBook Pro, then I would just go for it. Get yourself the M1 MacBook Air. It's unlikely that they're gonna do an event straight after WWDC. I don't think that's gonna happen. If, if it does happen, it's gonna be autumn, fall, it's gonna be October time probably. I wouldn't worry too much about the next version of the M chip. At the moment we have the M1. The M1 is in this MacBook Air and it's the best chip I've used for a long, long time. And it's got so much headroom in there, particularly if you get the 16 gig version, it will last you for years. And a lot of these rumors from John Prosser about this new MacBook do mention an, a potential M2, you know, the next version of the chip that is in here. Unless you are really pushing things in terms of software development, music production, video editing, whatever it might be, you're not really gonna benefit from an M2 or an M1X, whatever, whatever it happens to be. You're just not. So I, I wouldn't actually base your decision making at the moment around a potential new chip coming. It's just the potential of a brand new device on the way. That's what bothers me. So hold fire until WWDC, then make your decision. If you're actually considering the MacBook Pro, now you've heard all this and you're thinking, well, maybe that's the route to go down, then keep watching for a link to a video I've done very recently talking about where that might be heading because there's a lot to bear in mind with that device as well. Apple are up to something. I've got lots of ideas on how that can affect you as a consumer. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.